Deep inside the limestone cliffs of northern Greece, in the shadowy chambers of a cave once sealed off from time, a discovery was made that has haunted archaeologists for more than 60 years. A skull fused into the rock itself, peering outward from its calcite prison like a fossilized guardian. At first glance, it seemed human. But as scientists peered closer, they realized something terrifying. This was not the skull of a modern human, nor that of a Neanderthal. It was something else entirely, and its story would challenge everything we thought we knew about our own origins. The cave where this enigma was found, Petralona Cave, had long been hidden from the world until a villager stumbled upon its entrance in 1959. What he found inside was extraordinary. Stalactites hanging like frozen daggers, stalagmites rising like stone sentinels, and within them, something stranger still. There, encased in glistening calcite, was the unmistakable shape of a skull. It was as if the earth itself had swallowed this being whole and preserved it for hundreds of thousands of years. At first, the discovery was met with awe, but soon it was confusion that gripped the scientific community. For decades, researchers struggled to classify the skull, trapped as it was in a matrix of mineral deposits that prevented precise dating. Estimates swung wildly. Some argued it was 170,000 years old. Others believed it could be as ancient as 700,000. But none of these guesses prepared them for the truth. In 2024, advances in uranium thorium dating technology finally allowed scientists to measure the calcite surrounding the skull. The results were staggering. The mineral crust was at least 277,000 years old, which meant the skull itself was likely around 300,000 years old. This placed it squarely in the middle Pleistocene, an age of shifting climates, fierce predators, and a world populated by multiple species of early humans. But here is where the mystery deepens, when scientists compared the skull's features to known hominin species, they found it fit into neither of the categories they expected. It wasn't Homo sapiens. We hadn't yet emerged on the global stage. And it wasn't Neanderthal either, though their ancestors were already forming in Europe. Instead, the Petrolona skull showed traits that connected it to another shadowy figure in the human family tree, Homo heidelbergensis. This species, first identified from a jawbone in Germany, is thought to be a common ancestor of both Neanderthals and modern humans. But evidence of their existence has always been scarce. The Petrolona skull, with its mixture of archaic and advanced traits, suddenly offered a tantalizing glimpse of this elusive lineage. Imagine the creature to whom this skull belonged, a being with a heavy brow ridge, a broad face and powerful jaws. A hunter who roamed Europe's ancient forests, perhaps wielding wooden spears, perhaps mastering the use of fire. Not yet us, but not wholly other. A species balanced on the precipice of becoming, leaving behind little more than bones to whisper its story. Yet even as this identification offers answers, it also stirs new questions. Why was the skull alone? No other bones were found nearby. Was this individual buried deliberately by companions? Did it die in solitude, its body swept away by time while only the head remained? Or was the skull placed there purposefully, part of a ritual we cannot hope to understand? And here lies the unsettling thought. If this skull belonged to Homo heidelbergensis, then Europe was home to multiple branches of humanity at once. Neanderthals evolving in one corner, mysterious archaic humans in another, and eventually, modern humans arriving to reshape the story entirely. The Petrolona skull reminds us that our history is not a straight line, but a tangled web filled with dead ends and forgotten experiments in evolution. The discovery also rekindles a broader debate. Just how many species of humans once walked the Earth together? In recent years, fossils such as the Denisovans in Siberia, the Hobbits of Flores Island, and the Harbin Dragon Man in China have shattered the illusion that our past was simple. Instead, 
the evidence points to a world teeming with diversity, where different human species shared landscapes, exchanged tools, and maybe even genes. The Petrolona skull is one more voice in that chorus, reminding us that we are but the last survivors of a once crowded stage. Still, mysteries remain. Some researchers are not convinced by the Heidelbergensis label. They argue that the skull's features are too unusual, too distinct to fit neatly into any known category. Could it represent a branch of humanity we have yet to name? A species lost entirely to time, save for this solitary skull locked in stone? If so, Petrolona Cave may hold secrets beyond our imagination. Picture the scene. 300,000 years ago, deep within Europe's wilderness, a group of early humans takes shelter from the cold within the cave. One of their number falls, whether to sickness, injury, or perhaps violence. The group leaves, abandoning the body to the earth. Slowly, drip by drip, calcite forms, hardening around the skull until it becomes part of the cave itself. A silent witness to epochs of ice and thaw until modern eyes stumble upon it. And now, in the 21st century, that skull looks back at us, daring us to decipher its meaning. It reminds us that the line dividing human from not quite human is thinner than we ever imagined. That our story is not one of inevitability, but of chance. For every lineage that thrived, countless others vanished into the dark. As scientists continue to probe Petrolona Cave, they hope to find more than just a single skull, perhaps tools, bones, or traces of fire that might reveal the daily lives of these forgotten people. Each fragment could unlock another piece of the puzzle. Until then, the Petrolona skull remains one of the most haunting relics of our evolutionary journey. So the next time you look in the mirror, consider this. Your reflection is just the latest chapter in a story stretching back hundreds of thousands of years. And somewhere in Greece, set into stone, lies the face of a being that was almost us, but not quite. What secrets does it still keep? And could discoveries yet to come rewrite the very definition of what it means to be human? The answers, perhaps, are waiting in the darkness, sealed in stone, until we are ready to find them. Discoveries like this mysterious skull remind us how little we truly know about humanity's past. And if one strange find can shake our understanding of evolution, imagine uncovering evidence of an entire civilization hidden deep in the Amazon, one that history insists should never have existed. Very little is left of the ancient North American monuments. More than 90% of the structures that were documented are now completely gone. And of the less than 10% that remain, the majority have been vandalized and destroyed. Everybody's heard about the Aztecs. Everybody's heard about the Maya. But before the Aztecs and before the Maya, there were a culture who are referred to as the Olmecs. I explored the Olmec mystery uh, in considerable depth. At the turn of the 19th to the 20th century, an era brimming with curiosity and the spirit of discovery, the ancient civilizations of Mesoamerica began to captivate scholars and adventurers alike. This period, steeped in Victorian-era fascination, saw ancient cultures not as relics of the past, but as windows into a grand, albeit lost, world. The settlement story of the Americas is much more complicated uh, than we've, you know, than, we, than we've realized. Fueled by a mix of exploration, colonization, and a penchant for romanticizing the unknown, people were drawn to the mysteries that ancient societies held. Institutions in Europe and the United States, including museums and universities, recognized the value of understanding these indigenous civilizations. They began to fund expeditions, not just for the sake of collecting artifacts, but to delve deeper into the history and culture of these ancient peoples. This marked a significant shift in archaeology, transforming it from a quest for treasures to a scientific discipline focused on careful excavation and analysis. This is part of a a curious mystery that is not unconnected to the genetic mystery. The Olmec civilization, with its colossal heads and intricate stone structures, was one of the earliest to be uncovered. 
Yet in these initial stages, many artifacts were mistakenly attributed to the more familiar Maya and Aztec civilizations. This was largely due to their apparent similarities in artistic style and because these civilizations were better understood at the time. Uh, it's been known by archaeologists for quite a long time that there are anomalous skulls uh, in parts of Brazil. The unique aspects of Olmec art and iconography were not immediately recognized, highlighting the challenges faced by early archaeologists in differentiating between the complex cultures of the region. Two figures who played a pivotal role in bringing the wonders of Mesoamerica to the Western world were John Lloyd Stevens and Frederick Catherwood. Their expeditions, documented in Incidents of Travel in Central America, Chiapas and Yucatan, and Incidents of Travel in Yucatan, not only introduced the Maya civilization to many, but also set a standard for future archaeological work. Their detailed illustrations and engaging narratives captured the imagination of the public, sparking a wave of interest in ancient Mesoamerican cultures. This era also saw the beginnings of comparative archaeology, where discoveries from Mesoamerica were placed in a global context, offering new perspectives on the development of human societies. Museums evolved from mere collections of curiosities to centers of research and education, significantly contributing to the dissemination of knowledge about these ancient cultures. Furthermore, the late 19th and early 20th centuries witnessed the emergence of interdisciplinary approaches in archaeology, incorporating anthropology, linguistics, and even early environmental science, which enriched the understanding of Mesoamerican civilizations. The story of how the colossal stone heads became recognized as a key to understanding the Olmec civilization is a fascinating tale of curiosity, exploration, and eventual enlightenment within the archaeological world. Initially stumbled upon by Western archaeologists in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, these massive sculptures, some towering over nine feet tall and weighing several tons, presented a mystery. But what's fascinating about them is they are, they are supposedly the first high civilization of Central America. With their distinctive facial features, including flat noses and fleshy cheeks and often adorned with helmet-like headgear, they captivated those who found them but left many questions unanswered. What, what do we think those helmets were that they were wearing? Nobody knows, because no physical example of such a helmet has ever been found, just like no physical example of an Egyptian pharaoh's helmet, a crown has, has ever been found. The first significant acknowledgement of these heads came from Jose Melgari Serrano in 1862, when he uncovered one at Tres Zapotes in Veracruz. Melgar described the sculpture as having Ethiopian features, a reflection of the era's interpretations and biases, underscoring how little was known about the Olmecs then. Although Melgar's discovery was groundbreaking, it was initially seen as an isolated find rather than evidence of a broader, unknown civilization. For decades, these colossal heads were viewed more as curious anomalies rather than vital cultural artifacts. Without a wider archaeological context, their true significance was overlooked, and they were sometimes wrongly attributed to other known civilizations like the Maya or Aztec, or even to entirely speculative, unknown cultures. It was a puzzle missing its broader picture, waiting for the pieces to be put together. The narrative began to shift in the mid-20th century, thanks to more focused and systematic excavations in the Olmec heartland, led by archaeologists such as Matthew Sterling. These efforts unearthed additional colossal heads alongside other artifacts, helping to piece together the puzzle of the Olmec civilization. It was through this dedicated work that the Olmecs were finally recognized as a distinct and influential culture in Mesoamerica, predating and potentially influencing subsequent civilizations like the Maya and Aztecs. In 1945, a groundbreaking expedition led by Matthew Sterling to San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan dramatically advanced our understanding of the Olmec civilization, an enigmatic culture that laid the foundational stones of Mesoamerican history. Recognizing the potential significance of these sites, the Smithsonian Institution stepped in, providing the necessary support and funding for a more thorough exploration. The vastness of San Lorenzo, spreading across several kilometers, presented another hurdle, it was impossible to excavate the entire site in one go, so Sterling and his team had to make strategic decisions about where to dig, prioritizing areas where surface finds indicated the presence of significant artifacts. This meticulous approach to excavation was critical, requiring careful planning, mapping, 
and a methodical technique to ensure the delicate artifacts some centuries old were preserved for future study. As they cleared the jungle overgrowth and dug into the ancient soil, Sterling's team was not just unearthing artifacts, they were also piecing together the story of the Olmec civilization. Every artifact, every stone, and every fragment of pottery added a new chapter to our understanding of this ancient culture. The detailed recording and documentation of their findings were essential, providing a basis for future analysis and helping to paint a fuller picture of the Olmec way of life. San Lorenzo, dating back to around 1200 to 900 BCE, stands as a monumental beacon in the study of Mesoamerican history, often celebrated as the oldest major city in the region. This ancient city predates the civilizations of the Maya and Aztecs, providing a unique glimpse into the dawn of complex societies in the Americas. Thanks to radiocarbon dating, researchers have been able to pin down the timeline of San Lorenzo, offering a clearer view of the Olmec civilization's early days. Among the most striking discoveries at San Lorenzo, the site has yielded jade figurines and Celts, indicating robust trade networks and the cultural significance of jade. An array of pottery styles found at the site offers insights into daily life, artistic expression, and the Olmec's trade relations. The discovery of large structures, including platforms and possible elite residences, points to a highly organized society capable of mobilizing significant labor resources. The urban layout of San Lorenzo, organized around a central axis, reflects a thoughtfully planned development. The existence of distinct ceremonial and residential areas suggests a sophisticated urban structure, possibly mirroring social hierarchies within the Olmec society. In the 1950s, the archaeological spotlight turned to La Venta, an Olmec site in Tabasco, Mexico, building on the momentum of earlier discoveries at San Lorenzo. This shift marked a significant phase in unraveling the mysteries of the Olmec civilization, regarded as one of the earliest complex societies in Mesoamerica. With a renewed interest in the Olmec culture, archaeologists like Philip Drucker and Robert Heiser applied advanced methods and interdisciplinary approaches to dig deeper into the site's secrets, offering a more comprehensive understanding of this ancient civilization. La Venta thrived between approximately 900 to 400 BCE, a period that witnessed the peak of Olmec cultural and artistic development. This era underscored the Olmec's remarkable achievements in architecture, art, and urban planning, setting a precedent for subsequent Mesoamerican cultures. Among the distinct features of La Venta is the Great Pyramid, a monumental structure made of earth and clay, noted for its unique conical shape. Unlike the pyramidal structures that would later dominate Mesoamerican landscapes, the Great Pyramid's design and scale highlight the Olmec's advanced engineering skills and their capacity for organizing large-scale construction projects. This pyramid, along with other structures at the site, was aligned with celestial bodies, hinting at the Olmec's sophisticated understanding of astronomy and suggesting its role as a ceremonial and cultural hub. The systematic excavation efforts at La Venta brought to light not only architectural innovations but also a wealth of artifacts, including the iconic colossal heads carved from basalt, believed to represent rulers or significant figures within Olmec society. Similarly, altars adorned with intricate carvings provided glimpses into the civilization's mythology and rituals. La Venta also revealed complex burial sites and offerings, including serpentine mosaic pavements, which offered insights into the civilization's funerary practices and religious beliefs. These findings have been instrumental in piecing together the social structure, religious practices and artistic achievements of the Olmec civilization, significantly influencing the study of Mesoamerican archaeology. However, the preservation of La Venta faces challenges due to the tropical climate and human factors, underscoring the importance of ongoing research and conservation efforts. The exploration of La Venta in the 1950s was a watershed moment in understanding the depth and complexity of the Olmec civilization, providing a foundation for future studies and ensuring the legacy of this pivotal culture in Mesoamerican history remains appreciated and preserved. But what's fascinating about them is they are, they are supposedly the first high civilization of Central America, that they create structures on a massive scale that you can see connections between them and the later, the later Maya. For the Maya, the Milky Way was a particularly important feature of the heavens. They conceived of it as the road that led to their netherworld, Zibalba, 